welcome to another very exciting episode of How Did You Show. Today I have a super exciting guest with me, a good friend of mine who is inspiring me and others who is uh, smashing in the property industry while still in a full-time job and having a young family and so much more. There's so much to learn from him and he is um, and he kindly agreed to come on the show today which I'm super excited. So this is Dan Anson Hart. Hello Dan. Welcome on the show. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Long time, Miss. I think we've been talking about this for months, haven't we? We've been, we've been. So yeah. yeah, we've been. Yeah, it's good to be on. No, thanks for having me. Thank you very much for coming. So, yeah, as I said, that you are super, super inspiring for many, many reasons. Uh, as I said, very inspiring. I keep using that word because that's how to describe you. So I thought you're going to be a fantastic guest on the show and everybody's going to have a lot to learn from you. So thank you, again, thanks so much for coming. Can you tell us who is Dan for those who don't know you, please? Uh, well, first of all, thanks for that introduction, Lance. It's... Um... I still find that hard to believe in that. It's like, me, why? I don't understand why, but um, no, it means a lot. So thank you very much. And yeah. again, I'm inspired by so many people, including myself, for just, yeah. So no, thank you very much. That was lovely. Um, who's Dan? Dan is um, turning too grey too early. That's who Dan is. Um, I know this this morning. But Dan, I, I grew up in Minehead, Somerset. Um, I studied to be a secondary school PE teacher. Uh, so I lived in Plymouth whilst I studied, where I met my now wife. Uh, we moved down to Dorset and we started teaching in Dorset. And very quickly, four, I think it was four or five years we were in Dorset for. Um, my wife, Jodie, she's a primary school teacher at the time and I'm a secondary school teacher um, specialising in PE. Did some English and, and humanities, as you do as a PE teacher. But yeah, very quickly realised that I'm giving so much time and I'm just getting very little return. I found that the better you were at your job, the more crap you get chucked oh. um and i just thought well, why am i doing this what's the reward here uh, obviously at start I, kept, I i started all enthusiastic creative and innovative lessons and i just thought this is just getting hammered out of me so quick um so yeah i just i, I lost I, I lost my love and my passion for it really lengths and um i couldn't really see i've always wanted to be the best as i could but and i got to very quickly like i don't want to be the best i can in this in this sector because i'm just going to get more and more crap chucked at me less and less time for me and my family so yeah i i knew something had to change so we took the uh, jody never really settled in dorset um so yeah we just took the the decision we either were going to go traveling to sell up everything and go traveling or it was a case of we we head back down to cornwall which is where jody's from uh, and set set ourselves a base there um, we knew that i wanted to get out of teaching so we needed to find a profession that i could get my teeth into but in Cornwall, you don't really get the salaries that you, you, I was after. Um, so I knew I was going to have to travel quite a bit. So I wanted to be in Cornwall. So I knew that if I was traveling, I knew she was going to be safe with the family, with, with, a, with a network. So, yeah, we decided against the traveling because we thought if we come back, we're starting from scratch again. Um, I have to get a house again, had to do all this again. So we just thought, no, we can do the traveling. When we're in a position, we can do it nicely. Um, my camping days are gone. So, um, yeah, no, we relocated. Lens took a bit of a, a ballsy decision to just quit the jobs relocated back down um, to Cornwall, found a place that we, we loved and we, we're now living, which is this house here. And yeah, it's, it's just gone from there, really. So I work in sales, currently is my day job. Um, so insulation manufacturers. So we in, the company I work for make insulation um, and I work with architects, building controls, energy assessors, things like that, um, in, in helping them specify what they need to, to hit regs, essentially. So yeah, it's been a complete change in, in careers and, and paths, but... I've been doing that now for five years and I, I, can't, I haven't looked back. So, apart from the summer holidays. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, but that's amazing. As you say, from being a teacher and going to sales and now you are a property mm. investor. So you really went through, ooh, trying, to, trying, trying of like very different things. Uh, but obviously, mm. it's making you who you are, if that makes sense. No? So you still have a, you're still very, very good with your fitness because obviously I follow you on social media. So you can be a teacher, you're still very, very into your fitness. The sales, obviously the property, you need to be good in sales. So that's going to be very hard as well. So it's like everything, what you've been doing in your life, it's, it's going to work out really well for you, what you're trying to achieve now. So that's amazing. 100%, that's so important. Yeah, it's so important to have transferable skills. Generally, you, you, a lot of the skills, teachers, I, I am a true believer that uh, teachers are a profession where you've got to be jack of alls. Like literally, you're a, you're a care worker, you're a parent, you're you're an educator, you're a blooming 
social worker, you are all of those hats at, at once, and you've got to be so organised on the ball. So, in fact, the, the company I work for now, I was the first, I was a bit of a punt for them in terms of I was the first non-sales person they took on. As a result, we've taken on four more PE teachers. Wow. <laughs> it's crazy, <laughs> uh, and they're all excelling. So, um, no, they're definitely presenting. That's part of the day job I love. Like I still do presentations to architects and building inspectors to a group of 10 to rooms of 100 or so plus so I love that side of things and that's kind of what's got me into obviously I met you at the pig as well which is the host in the networking event which we'll, I'm sure we'll touch on but again I, I enjoy that being in front of people and, and presenting so no definitely it's been a big help yeah definitely as you said it's, it's a very very important skill to have when you are in a property and when you're in a sales and as you said as well you mentioned already that you you are um, a host in the pig which is a property uh, investment uh, sorry pig property investment group isn't it property investment professional group. professional investment group. yeah professional investment group yes um, so you you know like being there presenting that as well so you, you're using all these skills you, for 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 your property journey now which is yeah so it's it's priceless it's priceless to have all that so and you're very very confident as you said we met then and so you, you're very very confident you know what you're talking about you're talking with passion you love helping people so that's amazing well done well done so how did you yeah, so how did you start with property? Why property and how did you get into it? How did you become the host and pick or how, how did it all started for you? It all started like that. Uh, we literally, it was a family wedding. I went to a family wedding and the groom, uh, it was Jody's side, and the groom would, was doing the speech, the best man's speech for the groom. Um, the best man was saying how the groom had bought five, five properties this year and I just couldn't get my head around that. Because in my head, I've always thought to own property, you've got to be a millionaire. Like, how has he bought five? And and, and he was a he was just a builder, no disrespect. But I was like, how can he be this millionaire to buy these properties? So it wasn't until that that really got the light bulb uh, ticket like, on for me. And thinking, how has he done this? So I did the obviously the courteous stalk on on social media, <laughs> stalk the hell out of him. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, what is he doing that I'm missing out on here? So I found that they've been on property courses. Um, so I just started listening to podcasts. Yeah, he'd been on Progressive courses previously. So then I found that Progressive, Progressive had a podcast. So my day job, I'm traveling generally pre-COVID. I was doing 800 to 1,000 miles a week. So I was in the car a lot, um, as, as you do and you enjoy. So yeah. I was listening to a lot of books, podcasts. And I was just trying to soak up as much as I could and leverage in that time. But I used to be hot at karaoke because I was in the car listening to the radio at the time. <laughs> I couldn't tell you what's the charts now because I just don't listen to the radio whenever my car podcasts on or audiobooks on. So I'm letting the, uh, the karaoke skills go as a sacrifice. But <laughs> <good one>. yes, <laughs> I, I, um, I digress. But yeah, length. It was literally case of, I just found out that there was something else. And how did I then get into the, uh, the networking event? Obviously, first thing I wanted to do is find other people with this mindset as well is who else is doing this locally. And um, there was one. Cornwall property event professional investment group is called but it kind of specializes in property um and there was a one in Devon so pig um Plymouth so I went to both and I got speaking with the host Angelos um who's doing amazing things as well and yeah he just kind of took a liking to me really and he just said look why don't you want to get involved and I was like it was one of those I'm just a yes man I suppose for my sins it's a case of mm. I don't know how the hell I'm going to fit this in. I don't know what I'm talking about, but you know what? I'm going to be going to these events anyway, so I might as well be still at the front and, and hosting it. Amazing. Um, so yeah, it just went from there, Lex, really, and it's just kind of just snowballed. Mm. Amazing. So is that when you just, because obviously we still need to remember that this is for mainly for the beginners as well. So just to kind of mm -hmm. like bring it up. So when you said that um, somebody, you, you met someone yeah, who suddenly got five properties and you're like, so how did you do that? So is that where you um, learn about rent to rent um, when you start digging in no. or different? No, no, sorry. Yeah, so Penny dropped at the wedding, but something else, I'm missing out on a trick here. Yeah. So I spent months, months driving, listening to audiobooks, learning about different strategies, learning that I, I knew that for me to do this, I needed time. I didn't have time because I'm traveling the country every day of the week. And with a young family, I've got a four and a two year old, two little boys, a lovely wife. I'm, I'm a family man. I want to be home when I'm at home and I want to try and spend as much time as I can with them. So I just knew I needed to find time. I needed to work at time. Now I'm on a decent wage. My wife was teaching at the time. We wanted to get her away from teaching so she could really be, a, be the great mum that she is. Um, 
and just have more time. So yeah, we, we, what did I do? My next step was just finding different strategies that brought me that cash flow. So for me, I narrowed it down to cash flow and strategies, but you don't need much money because we didn't have big chunky deposits to go and invest straight away. So if you've got cash, brilliant. You can maybe leverage someone else's time, team up with someone else who has time. You've got the cash, right? Let's work together and start building something. But I didn't have one, the knowledge. I didn't have two, the time. So obviously I've had to start from scratch in that respect. So yeah, I went on, um, I joined a mentoring scheme because I just thought, look, I need, to, I need some accountability. I need some direction. So I went on that because I very quickly then learned that deal sourcing was a good good way of building cash flow to get yourself started in property mm-hmm. deal sourcing is a is a life skill for property investors essentially isn't it yeah, yeah. um that's that's your life yeah. that's that you need to know that in and out so essentially yeah. links um i went to the wedding i think it was in october time by december i joined the mentor uh, academy and i over christmas i set myself up a, men, uh, a property sourcing business um so come january I was director of vendor marketing for my property sourcing business. I was compliant. I went through all of the correct compliancy website set up. Oh, I was marketing amazing. myself. I, I've really, I've, I have gone, uh, I've gone all in. Like if I do something, I'll do it properly. But nice. I very quickly realized I started getting phone calls. I was getting lots of phone calls, but I just couldn't convert. And I was thinking, well, these phone calls are taking so much time up. I'm not really getting anywhere. Right. I thought if I need to really push on, I'm going to have to spend a lot more time. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just didn't have the time to dedicate to it. So I thought there must be another cash flow and strategy out there where it's not going to take so much of me because yeah. deal sourcing is so much on you as a, as a deal sourcer to find the deals, negotiate the deals, then find the, the, the investors, then work with the solicitors and, and get it over. It's a lot of time yeah. consum- consumption there. So I just didn't have that. So I just needed to find another strategy to cash flow me um, and less intensive time-wise mm. so in fact it was the first pl- uh, pig plymouth event so professional investment group plymouth the first pig plymouth i went to it was on the, the headline speaker was francis dolly um, he's kind of like the godfather of renter went down this way and um i went into that thinking why the hell would anyone do rent to rent like what is <laughs> time? why would i put why my that? money into someone else's house yeah why would i do it why would i put my money into someone else's house manage their house but i just couldn't get my head around it thanks and um and now so you're I went there quite a pessimist. Well, I wouldn't have fun, but yeah, no, I, I just, the penny dropped as soon as I was in there. They, they, they sold it very well. I'm not easy to be sold to. Um, and cut long story short, I followed up. I had a few chats with Francis and Will, his partner, Will Matthews, and they're a lovely bunch. And they just, they got my kind of humor lens, like dry humor, witty. Um, I just kind of connected with them. And I think that is a key if you're looking for a mentor or, or you've got to click, you've got to trust. And um, yeah, so cut long story short, I wanted to get, I'm, I needed to, I was going kind of balls deep. I wanted to go into this. I need to get this sorted. So rent to rent was then the next cash flow strategy. So if I'm honest, I think there's only two really, two cash flow strategies to get you a beginner into property, to learn the trade, get yourself in there and earn yourself your time back. Um, so property sourcing, I didn't have the time to do that properly. So I, I had to scrap that. And then I went all in on rent to rent. So it just so happened that the next course that Francis and Will were doing, uh, they're based in Bristol, and the next course is a one-day event, and it was this weekend that I was already booked on to go to a stag do in Portugal for, for a good friend of mine. I was like, oh, my God, the next one after that's two months down the line. I was like, that's two more months I'm going to have to wait. Like, yeah. I want this now. So I had to fill a sickie. I paid for the hotel. I paid for my flights. But I, I bailed out of the stag do and went on the course. No <laughs> way. So you really yeah. want to fall in. Full, 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 full in. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Well done. Yeah. I mean, that's... I'm actually meeting him this week. Um, but yeah. What you, you're inspired. Yeah. I'm, meeting a, I'm meeting a friend. <laughs> but at the end of the day, ladies, it's how bad you want it. Exactly. Um, I could have gone on this course. I've already spent all the money for the, uh, sorry, on the course. I could have gone on this stag do, spent more money. It's just like, I'm not getting anywhere. It's not progressing me. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to go all in. I just wanted to get on with it. And so, yeah, I, I pulled a sickie on this stag do and I went on the course. I took my wife, Jodie, because I knew that if I needed, I needed support, I needed that network there. And I couldn't sell this to her because she wasn't bothered about property. She's yeah. like, so I managed to get her involved. I got her to the course. They sold it the concept to her as well in terms of this is what it takes this is what you what could happen as if you do it right and literally all we've done is just follow the steps and implemented it with with 
Learned he had a lot of grit, determination. A lot of people would have given up quite early on. And I think that's just what the difference is, really. So, yeah, just implemented it from there. So, as we had a company name, um, by the next day, I'd already set up the company. Um, I had a VA doing my website and logos for us. So, yeah, it was snowballed from there. So, we did the course in March 2019. Uh-huh. Um, we were but it took about a month to get the website up and running. So it wasn't until April that we started D2V marketing, so director vendor marketing. Um, and we were spending evenings, once the boys had gone to bed, we were spending the evenings on the sofa, like you are doing at the minute, and it's amazing, is, is writing the, well, print out the letters, signing each letter, handwriting the envelopes, she'd stamp them, I would then the next morning post them. Like, that was literally it. We must have done that for weeks and weeks and weeks. Must have sent about three and two fifty to three hundred letters. I can't remember exactly, but yeah, it's generally about two fifty to three hundred letters over a space of a couple of months. Yeah, um, and yeah, it just it kind of went from there. Yeah. So amazing. Yeah, it was intense, but how bad you want it? Exactly. If you want it bad enough, you'll do anything for it. So oh, well done, honestly. You really truly are inspiration in many ways. Like so, that, that's that's brilliant. So um, so now you learn about rent, rent to rent and you're like okay so we're going to f- fully for rent to rent you said you set up you set everything up you start sending the direct to vendor letters and now you start receiving some answers yeah or how did you get your first one because this is like the main question of the episode how did you how did dan get his first hmo and how did you get that <laughs> Yeah, yeah no, of course um so so we sent lots of letters out my tip would be uh, we had uh, staged letters, so we didn't just send one person one letter. If we didn't hear back from them, a week later, we'll send them a second letter. Not the same, but a, a staggered approach of letters. So first one might be an introduction letter. Second one might be, I appreciate you might be a bit sceptical on this, but here's some examples of the figures that we like comparing standard agents with your, your, your offer, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Next letter, if you still haven't heard, I'd send them a third letter with the next kind of like follow-up. If I hadn't heard then, I had a fourth letter. So generally the first if you don't hear on the first time it'll take probably the third or fourth letter to get by it so to answer your question Lance, how do i get the first i ballsed up my first opportunity pretty honestly um so a lesson that i'd advise is it was just naivety really you see on the the groups the social networking groups the the, the property groups that people are like oh yeah just secured this deal this deal and naively i yeah, negotiated on a seven bed property need a lot of work um, and this landlord had another property next door as well and she said look potentially i'd be happy to pass that one to you next year as well so she was a bit skeptical obviously we we're a new company didn't have any properties behind us or anything like that so she was a bit Ooh, how do i know you're going to do this right anyway cut long story short offers were accepted she sent the client sent the contracts over she sent the contracts to her solicitor the solicitor had no idea what was going on so he actually pulled us all apart like why would someone why would someone want to rent your property but then want to take on all the pro, uh, the bills pay money into it he said this just looks fishy to me so that was something i learned very quickly so my first advice would be massively spe- um, specify that this is a, a niche offer that if your solicitor is not a property specialist so they need to you need to speak with a property specialist i can advise yeah, on yeah. who you could potentially speak to um, but yeah straight away she obviously as soon as the person she trusts for all of her legal advice turns around and says, well, this looks fishy to me you're, you're automatically like just trying to swim upstream aren't you um yeah, yeah. and then to top it all off i naively was like I, I posted about it on an open group so i oh, just agreed um in principle just agreed this deal this 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 these are the what a mug she saw it um so like uh, she says damn i completely get you're trying to market to your investors but my worry is if our current agents were to see this my relationship with them might be jeopardized so basically i had a solicitor poo poo it and then I kind of balls it up myself by get, going gun ho and being so stupid. Like Jodie was like, why did you do it? You had no need to be doing that, like posting. So yeah, that was a big balls up. So hands up there, I, I balls up, but I learned it. So yeah, I'd never good. post about a deal unless it's over the line I'm signed. Um, <laughs> yeah, lost the first one. Second one, I also, sorry. It's an important yeah, well, yeah, learn from other people's mistakes. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. So yeah, balls up my first one. Second one couldn't get it over the line because they couldn't get the tenants out quick enough because I said like, I'm not prepared to take it on with in, like standing tenants. I need it to be vacant yeah. um, because we want our tenants in there. So it was a student property, um, but they were just sick and tired of all the maintenance stuff. So yeah, couldn't couldn't get that one over the line because they couldn't get tenants out. It was already too late into the year for them. Um, uh, tenants had resigned. So it was a third attempt that I managed to secure a, a deal. Um, 
and how did I do it? Viewed the property. The landlord, I hadn't met the landlord because he was a, um, an out of area landlord. So I met his agent, which is a bit awkward. Like he had a good relationship with his agent, but he's like, yeah, I'm looking to sell the property. I was like, well, I don't really want to take on the property with you if you're going to sell it because it yeah. kind of puts in a bad situation. I said, yeah. why do you need to sell it? So obviously the whole point is, well, what is his motivation? Why does he want to sell it? And his interest was, well, I just wanted to go down a, another investment avenue really and potentially into holiday lets or things. So I knew he didn't need the money. So that was straight away. I'm thinking, right, okay, this might be a purchase lease option here. Yeah, yeah, so well purchase lease option is I can offer a deal for a rental for a certain period of time and offer to buy it in the long term. He's looking to sell it but he's happy to hold it at the same time. So that is perfect. So if tips again would be if the property is up for rent and it's up for sale, then it shows that the, the owners may not need the money. That yeah. might be a perfect lease option opportunity. So cut long story short lengths, offered a three offers. So my tip would always be like, always offer more than one, okay. one opportunity. Because if you just put one offer on a table, it's like, well, yeah, well, no, nah, don't like that offer. No, we'll scrap it. But if you offer three offers or two offers, so you might offer a three-year option and you might offer a five-year option, but the five-year option, there, you're offering them more rent each month. Well, that five-year option is obviously your favorite because you've got longer-term security on that contract, uh -huh. longer profiting. So you can offer, the, offer to give them a little bit more money, perhaps. Um, you might offer to be able to do a bit more on the refurb because you're going to be earning more longer term. So the, what I'm trying to get out there is that they might not like the three year option, but you've got a five year option. So you've got some, they've got something to compare against. Yeah. If you just give one offer, they might just say, Oh no, I don't like that. Let's go. But at least if you give them a couple of offers, it's kind of like, I don't like this one, but that one looks quite good. Like they've got something to compare against. Nice, yeah. So this particular deal, I put three offers up. I put a three year option, a five year option and a purchase lease option. Mm -hmm. offer. Um, if I'm honest, I wasn't hopeful. I didn't expect anything to come off it. Um, went on holiday. We were in Greece. And I got a phone call on the on the work number. Obviously, we were getting no no, no calls on that phone out yet because it was so early doors. Um, so I ran away. I said, "Joe, just need to take this." It's one of the landlords we were speaking with, and he says, "Dan, I've got I've got a decision for you." I was like, "Right, okay." And what are you thinking? And he says, "I'd like to go with the lease option offer." I was like, "Shit, no!" <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I got that, and I was just thinking, "Oh, it's I think." Is an yeah, an OSM was it an oh shit moment? I was like, what the hell am I doing now? Like, I don't know. Crikey, I'm a solicitor. Like, I mean, so yeah, I am um, very all afternoon. I was researching lease option specialist listed. Yeah, cut long story short, bagged our first deal, um, which is a lease option, and then quickly after that, as they say, that once you get a bus, they all come out at the same time. Straight after that, we a portfolio landlord got in touch. We secured another purchase lease option with one of his properties that he was looking to sell and rent. Um, and he also got that to regular. Landlord. So we got three in the space of a month. Um, that is incredible. So, that is yeah, it was a bit of a whirlwind, really. Wow, mm. what a month. <laughs> what a month. Can, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. can you just like a, in, a, in, a, in a sentence or two explain for those beginners out there what actually lease option means, just for those who really don't understand? So... Because obviously we've been, we had an episode of this yeah. option, for example, but just in case for those who don't understand, can you just like explain in, in a sentence what that means for the beginners, please? Yeah, of course. Again, and even for those who aren't familiar with rent-to-rent, rent-to-rent is essentially um, a commercial lease, I suppose. So it's where you're, you have full control of the property, but you don't own it or buy it. Mm. Um, so rent-to-rent is essentially what we're offering the, the landlords we work with is guaranteed rent for, for three or five years, for example, depending on the, what their chosen option is. We will guarantee them X amount of, of rent per month, regardless if there's any voids or anything like that. Um, we potentially, in the condition of the property, we would contribute to a refurbishment of the property to add value um, and to get to the standards we need. So essentially, the landlord's benefits are they've got no worries about voids. They know exactly how much they're getting in the bank every single month, um, and it's going to be in the bank, so they're not worrying if the tenant's going to pay or not. Um, the property is going to be increased in value, hopefully, because of the refurb that we'll do. We'll continue to look after it as well. So not like end of a, a street year where it's just been trashed um, because of parties and stuff like that. And yeah, so that was a standard rent to rent offer. However, a purchase lease option, what we've offered is we'll give you all of that and buy your property at the end of the term. So we're saying, look, we'll give you the guaranteed rent. We'll put all the refurb in it. Now on a rent to rent contract, anything that happens with the property on our contracts we offer uh, a certain figure so it could be 50 pounds 100 pounds depending on what's negotiated mm -hmm. anything over that figure the landlord pays for 
So if a boiler breaks, the landlord's going to be sorting the boiler out because it's their property. However, with a purchase lease option, what we're saying is we will take on the property as if it are our own. We intend to buy this property at the end of our contract. So the landlord's got, in this instance, they've got five years of guaranteed rent and they've also got an agreed purchase at the end of that five year period. So they're going to profit for five years, no issues. They've definitely got a sale at the end of it for a price that we've agreed now. Mm -hmm. But the difference is also that we pay for all maintenance because it's our property. So essentially, Lenka, we've got a house which is everything but paid for. Yeah. It's, um, it's, essentially, it's our house. Um, so love that. we've got the option. We don't have to buy it. You have the option to buy it for the price you've agreed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, if the, if the housing market dropped on its pants and the property just down, like we couldn't justify buying it, then we could walk away or try and negotiate a longer term. Um, but we, we don't enter a lease option without the intention to buy it. So Fantastic. yeah, so yeah, that's hopefully that makes a bit more sense. So essentially a lease option is guaranteed rent for the extra period of time. We take over all the property, rent, repairs, certification, and we buy it at the end for an agreed price. Uh, but just um, from the beginners yeah. with the lease option, um, you in the end you don't have to buy the property in the end, but the landlord can change his mind. He have to. Sell. He have to sell. The landlord, yeah, the landlord can out from the deal, but you essentially can. Uh, there's obviously there's there's benefits in there anyway. I mean, it's, it, it's not that bad for the landlord anyway because you look after the property the whole time. You know, you invest money into the property, so you actually, even if you pull down, you're still giving property in a better condition that you started with eventually. Essentially. But just for the beginners, yeah. When another a fear of, and again another fear length. So when when people talk about rent um, lease options, they think, oh, what if the landlord sells? But that's why it's done with property specialist solicitors because we have a um, we basically we have something on the the title deeds that the landlord can't sell the property without our permission. Mm. So they can't just go and all right, we'll agree this, but near the end we're just going to sell it ourselves for a better price. No, that can't be done because as part of the lease option, you are legally binding contracts with with, pro with property specialist solicitors. There is uh, on the title of that property it says that nothing can be done without our say so. So you have got that security there as well, because that was a big fear of my legs in that, well, what if the landlord tries to sell it under our nose sort of thing? Yeah. But that's where I very quickly found out, no, on the title of the property, they've got, they, we've got to agree that sale if it was to go through. Yeah. Sorry to jump in. Amazing. No, 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 that's really good. Very good. Very well done. Thank you. Thank you for explaining that. Uh, that hopefully will make um, a bit more sense for the, especially the beginners out there. It's like, what actually are we talking about? So that's amazing. So now we understand what sort of deals you have in your portfolio at the moment. So that's really, really, really good. So then how did you, how did you start growing your business? So you, I mean, you, I mean, you already gave us the deal. So you had, you know, you sent some through that vendor, then you have the lease option, but now you have seven. Is that correct? So how did you get all of them? Today, yeah, yeah, seven. Minutes. How did you get all of them? So I thought it was about three. So the first three came about. Then as we were refurbishing the third of those three, um, I was selling some old furniture in, like the look of, because we were just trying to put some nice modern new furniture in. Um, I was selling it on Facebook Marketplace, and a local landlord came and bought it from us. Um, and he was just saying, oh, so what are you doing here? So tell everyone what you're doing. Any opportunity to tell everyone. So obviously he was a landlord. I didn't know if he had a property, um, but he was potentially vacant. So I just said, look, this is what we're doing, et cetera, et cetera. There's a property that was struggling to be let. We're taking it on, et cetera, et cetera. He goes, well, that's interesting because I've got a good friend of mine with a property locally who's struggling to let his. I was like, right, <laughs> let me in. Just cut long story short. View, um, he put me in touch, touch with that landlord, viewed the property, put offer across, and we secured that on a five-year rent-to-rent offer as well. So so number four was from Facebook Marketplace. Fantastic. Um, number five, I did a presentation at Pig Cornwall. So um, I was just asked to just give us an update on what you're doing, Dan, and how you're doing it with like such a difficult time period in terms of work full time and young ones. So yeah, and just happened that there was a um, someone in the audience who knew a fr who had a friend with an empty HMO locally as well, and they put us in contact with them. And to cut the story short, number five came from me telling people at a networking event what I did um, and sharing some case studies and yeah got put in contact and ended up taking that on another five year rent to rent offer as well option as well amazing so that was number what we on there that's number five number six was the start of this year uh, I did a happy new year to, uh, email out to all of our current landlords that we're working with I just said look hopefully you're really pleased no I asked them all for testimonials so once they did all their, their lovely testimonials I then got back to them and thanked them and said look thank you so much for your lovely 
our words if we're going to use this as marketing that's great thank you by the way do you know anyone else who's interested in potentially working with us uh, we'll offer a referral and one of the landlords came back and said well actually i've got another three properties i might have that you can have like, oh, okay. <laughs> so um, so we're due to have a conversation in a couple of months about that but one of the other landlords came back and said actually we've got a friend who might be interested so number six came by one of our existing landlords essentially uh-huh. and then number seven is our most recent um i did another batch of director vendor marketing um and i got a bite there so number seven is a local uh, sorry, a most more recent director vendor marketing. So four from director vendor marketing, uh, and the other three are from referrals. We're speaking to people in that. So in the pipeline, I'm meeting with a landlord this week who's got a portfolio of um, three to five properties that we're talking about, mm-hmm. and one of our existing landlords who's a portfolio landlord has said that they're potentially going to bring us well at least two. So potentially three and another one of our landlords has got another property that he's quite keen to bring to us so it's just snowballs lengths like once you once you do it just do what you want to do do it well um but i spoke to one of our landlords last week he goes look so there's other people in the area now cotton onto your business model i said let it's gonna happen he said but i just want to make sure you're aware like, i've been to every single one of them i've got no intentions of going anywhere like, i'm really happy with your service like, that means a lot thank you so much by the way you are in contract for another four years <laughs> but no it was yeah it's just nice to hear that so yeah but as i say Lang, so i mentioned to you previously i tell everyone rent to rent in my head is a short-term strategy because at the end of those terms those properties could be gone like yeah. in five years i could lose those properties because the landlord wants to take them on themselves they're in a much better state they could do it themselves perhaps so yeah. circumstances change so i've always got that fear that in five years i'm back to square one yeah like what happens obviously i can continue the market but i don't want to be doing i don't want to be a lettings agent i don't want to be a, an agent and the nice thing about rent to rent is it builds cash flow quick i've managed to do this off not needing a lot of cash up front yeah um so we've been working with people like investors family locally because you don't need as much investment initially because we're doing refurbs that range from 4k to, to 10 11k in some instances yeah. but we the rules generally are that we need to be have repaid that money back in the space of six to eight nine months worst case mm-hmm. um so the money will be paid quite nicely and quite easily for rent to rent in terms of any investment you initially put in but what i'm saying is i see it as a short term although so we've got the cash flow now for my wife to leave her job and we're now at our financial freedom figure in that my salary is covered as well comfortably so i could leave work tomorrow but it's kind of oh i'm just in that i'm it's that kind of horrible stage where like i could do it but I'm actually doing this okay at the minute. I can manage this. So oh, wow. yeah, I'm, I'm sitting tight at the minute, but I've got, a, a, we've got, a, we've got a get out plan, which I'm sure we'll get onto it a bit, but um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's great. So rent to rent is definitely a short term strategy. It's not going to be giving us freedom for long, long term, which is why the aim is to get me out of the day job so that I can really then kick on and start buying and building our own portfolio, which we will have then longer term. That's yeah. definitely what I'd say. So it's definitely a short term strategy for um, time gaining earning time to build your own portfolio that's the way i see it and i definitely think that others should see it that way of course yeah like it's a, it's a really really good point and um, i would about to ask you like so what is your plan um, and i will ask you like what is your plan then in the long term obviously because you you know the rent run as you said is only short term thing but before we get there before we get there as we are talking about the rent run and obviously loads of people do want to rent run is becoming it's very very popular these days if it's a rent to a gym or if it's rent to sa so which is serious accommodation uh rent rent is very very popular so can you just maybe share with us like like share with the share with the beginners what is your like um like some sort of uh, what i mean uh what you learn along the way if that makes sense like what sort of the b- biggest lessons you've been learning and what, what could you recommend to someone something they could do or something sh- they shouldn't do or from your own experience yeah no it's a good question I, 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 shit loads in short <laughs> um, literally i think the, the case is you learn everything you've got to make mistakes because you don't learn unless you make mistakes because you don't know if you're doing something wrong unless you make a mistake in my head. So we've made lots of mistakes. Um, and we've kissed a lot of frogs. And I think that like, I'm on my third my third set of cleaners. I'm on my third handyman. I'm just, just because you just go through them, but like, they start off really, really good. But then they just can't keep up with either the speed that you're expanding or growing or the standards that you want to keep. They, they just get a bit slack or um, the quality drops. Um, so what have I learned is to keep on keep in touch and keep on their toes in terms of look this is the standards but at the same time like 
we want it to be good for them. They want to enjoy working for us. So luckily we've got a, um, a, a refurb team and a handyman now that is fantastic. He's amazing. Um, but anytime I'm seeing him, I'll always meet him. I'll always bring him a pasty or something when I'm there. Just I want him to enjoy working for us, which the feedback we've had is we'll always ask, like, how has that been? Have, have we done everything okay for you? Because um, he always asks us, are you happy? So oh, I think it is a two-way thing. Yeah, yeah. It is a two-way thing massively. So don't take take good teams for granted. Um, that's one thing I've learned. And systemising where you can, Lengs, because it, you just want to an hour away from my properties. Um, so if an issue comes up, it's like, wow, that's a two-hour round trip without me then finding what the problem is yeah. so building a strong team around you so i've got a good system now all the key all the keys master keys is what i'm a massive advocate on as you know um, so master key is a must timer stats as well thermostats massive must for me just helps because there's nothing worse than going into one of your properties the temperature's set at 27 degrees the windows are open and there's no one in the blooming place yeah like, nothing more frustrating the amount of energy you're wasting there yeah. Um, so timer stats are great so if you're not familiar with a timer stat a timer stat is essentially a thermostat whereby it is a timer so the, the tenants have um, access to turn on the, the, the heating at any point it will always come on in the morning and the evening at the preset times but throughout the day if they maybe get a cold spell or they want to put the heating on they can turn it on but it automatically turns itself off after the time period nice so they can turn it on for half an hour an hour or four hours yeah. but it counts down so basically the whole reason I use that is that the amount of times I've gone into a property without them and the heating's on and no one's home or the heating's on and the windows are open. It's just complete waste of energy. Oh, yeah. So it just gets uh, helps us to control it. Obviously, we, we offer all bills included, so the tenants have got no interest or incentive. Like, there is a cap on that, but it's an extreme cap. So that's one thing. Um, the next thing I'm looking to systemise are the lights because they're at times I turn, walk into communal areas and the lights are on and no one's in there. Ah. So I'm looking to com- like maybe get motion lights or push lights um, where the, they turn themselves off. Yeah. But systems, finding systems, speaking with people doing what you're doing, Lenka. Like when I started, I didn't have a network, which is why I've tried to set up this WhatsApp group that you're into, you're in with as well. Like we've got like 90 people on there now. It's gone nuts. Yeah. Like, the whole idea is, I just want, I want, I would have loved to have some a group of people that are supportive, not going to judge me for a question, and that are doing what I want to be doing. Because if I've got a question about locks, I want to just be able to confidently ask it with no one judging me. Like I want. I just want people to, yeah so if anyone's a dick they're gone like, but no one has been and everyone is generally really helpful so yeah. I've just tried to just build a little group that I would have wanted at the start yeah. um, which has been really helpful so look my tips a long winded answer for you but tips systemise where you can if you don't know what the hell to systemise find people that are doing it and learn from them um, I think they were the big tips and look after the good the good trades for you my cleaners if they want something I've changed all the hoovers in my houses because they said my Henry's are too heavy <laughs> not a problem what hoover would you like <laughs> it's Snuggy. it's got to that like every single house has got exactly same hoover so i can keep them happy because they they do our checkout cleans they do like they are a key member of our team so i want to keep them happy and i, I don't want them to to not enjoy it like so yeah it's that's that's the key for me yeah and it's always like anything when you when i was obviously a p teacher I'm, i love my sport the change rooms after the change room, it's always the cleaner you look after like yeah, you, exactly everyone everyone don't take for granted don't don't no. think you're bigger than you big for your boots because everyone has like, like one of the one of my investors that i'm working with now his invest like previously his cleaner was an investor for him because uh-huh. you, you don't know like you just don't know anyone but, exactly um without that ultimatum but generally just yeah. just treat everyone with respect there's no there's no yeah. reason why you can't do that Oh, 100%. But also, even 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 if you even if it, there's no other meaning behind it, as you said, that you never know that someone could be with money or something like that, even without it, it's like you can't do that on your own. And it's like, do you have time to go there and clean the properties? You don't, which means you need a cleaner, which means it's a part of your team, which means that you are equal in the company because, in fact, she's even... In a way, the cleaner is even higher because you're the one who need to give her job. You need to, you're the one who's looking at you and all that. And she's the one who actually goes to properties and representing your company. So if, if you know, if someone's seeing, seeing her there, that she smiles, that she oh, says yeah. no, that she, you know, it's, it's huge, it's huge. So it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a team of people, isn't they it? They're undercover agents like that. Mm. Yeah, they're the undercover agents. I tell the cleaners, like, look, you're our eyes yeah, and ears. Yeah. Let us know. Like, yeah. Like, and I was, yeah. 
Exactly. It's like that's that's what we um uh, that's what we were learning as well when I was um re when I was learning about venture HMO and it's like exactly like cleaner. It's you need you have a good relationship with them because they'll tell you how the tenants live like. Are the tenants leaving as you say windows open or is is there a con do they are they opening windows in the bathroom or is the condensation or you know the mold growing and things like that? It's like a cleaner will tell you how they live. Um, if you told us some. 100% links and I've got a perfect example of that in terms of uh, during COVID obviously we couldn't do house inspections because we just couldn't get in houses safely mm. we didn't know what was going on very early doors were locked down but um, when we finally did get a were able to get in there we found that one of the tenants had moved their boyfriend in during COVID because obviously they wanted to be locked locked down together yeah. um, and the house had been trashed essentially like really disrespectful like takeaway boxes everywhere damage to the sofa like it had just been disrespected. It was so disheartening after you spent so much time and money into the place. But I, it was a cleaner that told me that. Um, and she's like, I don't want to be going to this house if it's going to be this bad. So obviously managed to get it all sorted. We've essentially changed the whole house over since. Like the tenants, we managed to help them move on because we're like, that's not going to work. It's not how we can do it. Cut them so short. If I, if I didn't do that, I'd have probably lost my cleaner. Like, mm. And obviously the, te the house would been in massive dis with disrepair so yeah i wouldn't have known about that if the cleaner hadn't told me yeah yeah well done yeah yeah, yeah. so no yeah, definitely. very important and it's like um same because obviously we're talking about rent to hmo but also for rent to essays as well because obviously that's what i was doing that's what i got um loads of loads and loads of experience in um and i was about to get mm. my own essays and that was prior covid when i was about to start uh, sign my contract and then the covid started so that sort of saved me in a way i was like okay let's not do it quite yet. but anyway what i want to say is that no matter what no matter what business you have cleaners are it, they are so 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 important for your business so it's like in essays you you, you know the, the the guests want clean property if they don't have a clean property they give you a bad review in um uh, hmo if the cleaner is not if the cleaner is not happy or you know and, and and you lose the cleaner or it's like you if you don't have that undercover a sort of undercover person there to tell you the truth is it, it's a game changer for your business so no matter what if it's you if you if you're having rent to rent, rent to hmo rent to essays look after your cleaners cleaners are very very important in your business so 100 percent yeah very 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 good and important points <laughs> Um, so what sort of thing what do you do um, what do you do uh, how do you how do you look for tenants Dan just for the beginners like is it, is it hard to find the tenants um, I think we've been quite fortunate the legs with regards to doing our due diligence from a day one we always wanted to be at a top end of the market and I think if you're at people are always like oh it's it's so over um, there's just so much already in the area there's there's um, I'm trying to find the word I'm after basically there's no room for you in the market that's what I'm trying to look at. It's um, saturated. That's what I'm after. It's a saturated market. So many rooms. Look, at the end of the day, if it's a saturated market, you're at the top of the market. You're not going to have a problem. Yeah. So what we've said is, like, we always want to be the high end of the market where we possibly can. Um, so we've got filling rooms. We've never had an issue. Touch wood. So we only use. I've only ever had to use spare room, and I find the key to filling your rooms is just be really responsive and helpful. Um, I think that's that's really it because the amount of people have just said, "Oh, you've been so quick to respond. Thank you so much." And it's not a case of waiting for tenants to come to you. Like we actively go and look for tenants. Nice. So I'll find the criteria that we're after if we're looking for a male, perhaps just to make the dynamics in the house nice, or a certain age group or a certain type of tenant. Well, I'll look for it as well. In spare room is the is the platform we use, um, and I'll actively go and search that found your profile. Let me think you could be a great fit for this house, etc. So we've actually picked a few good tenants from there. Mm. Um, so to answer your question lengths we've only used spare room i know some people use uh right move but i think right move is just too big for what we're doing mm -hmm. um and um others have used on the market as well never used on the market mm -hmm. and facebook as well as another one but we just never never needed to really right so that's amazing yeah, spare room is very fortunate yeah in, in one platform you basically managed to um um a tenant all your property. Market we do. fantastic yeah. Oh, well, yeah, that's that's great because you found what works for you, and that's obviously why would you change that if it really works? You really have to. And knowing you, and from what you told us as well today, you seem like the person that if something doesn't work, you change it to find something what works, which works. So that works perfectly for you. You found the perfect platform which works well. You go for something else for now. Oh, definitely, yeah. No, bro, don't fix it. Yeah, simple as that, yeah. But you know, it's really important as well. Like, I like I like the point when you said that you don't just wait for tenants to come to you. You do your own 
work, you do your own homework and you look, you also contact them, potential temp, potential future tenants. Like that's really, really good. That's a good point as well. That you don't, it's not that you just made an ad. It's like, look at my pretty room and that's it. And then you're waiting. Uh, Cause that's, uh, that's what I heard. You yeah, need to be a good, right. you need to be a good agent. You need to have a, all those good skills. So yeah, well done. That's really, really good. That's the difference between a standard agent loan as well, but they're not really incentivized to let these rooms as much. Like if we don't let these rooms, we're we're losing money because we've offered them, we're guaranteeing them, we're still paying the landlord. So we need to fill these rooms. So you're prepared to do anything you can to fill them. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's 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 not it's non negotiable. And what is making you stand out? Why you, why would people choose to go with you compared to other uh, property? If you said that there's a lot of rooms out there, uh, what's making you, do you uh, is that your customer service or is the quality of the room you give, you know, as a, what, what is it? What? I believe it's all of it links really. I think it's a key to, obviously initially it was the rooms, the quality of the rooms. Mm. Um, and initially, you know, what we do now is we've got, the nice thing is that we've got testimonials from our, um, our tenants and our landlords. So we've actually got evidence to back up what we're saying to people as well. So, yeah, I, th I think it is massively, it's a case of, look, what is the product you're offering? Well, that's the physical product, but what about the service that you're offering as a, as a result, or as an addition, I suppose? Um, and I think that's, that's the key because people buy from people and as well as a good product, it's all right, you can have a nice house, but if there's an issue, are they going to fix it? Like we've had again it's not a passive income it is not a passive income because this weekend i was out um out with my oldest on the weekend and i had a phone call from one of the tenants look we've had no wi-fi for the day i said oh, well you haven't told me but no problem at all got straight onto our provider and we found out there's an issue with the router so we've got a router being sent out to us thank you so much for doing this so quickly on a sunday but that, that that's what we're offering um they're paying higher rents than the local area because we're offering the better services mm -hmm. so yeah it's, it's service and product in my eyes fantastic yeah well done yeah, yeah exactly it's it's a, it's just like any other business as well no because you it's all about customer service and the products you're offering and if you're good at both of course you're going to be of course you're going to stand out of course people want to go with you because you've got you're, you you you're providing a good good service sorry good product with a good service so yeah absolutely mm. um, um is that is that just very quickly as well like is it hard to find a good harmony between the tenants and the property it, um uh, we've, we've generally been okay but like we've you've always got the whole the vision that you're going to create a new friends episode aren't you like, <laughs> <laughs> every house you're gonna have your, your monica your channel your, your ross etc but um no generally they've been all right yeah it's been pretty good like then we got then we run up we've got one house that um they whinge about one of the other housemates so i've met with that housemate and just said that suddenly look can you just be a bit more tidy a bit more courteous because i just said like, don't say the other tenants have mentioned it we said like on my recent inspection i noticed this this and this i'm aware it's your yeah, so yeah. there's just you've obviously got to go around it carefully but you've also got you've got to, um what i found then if they're not happy it will the the, the trouble will flush itself out eventually yeah. but you need to be there in the background just to be as positive where you can like we had one tenant that said uh, one of his items had been broken in the kitchen and like for me and you it was it'd be like um, I'd say like a pepper mill um like a salt and pepper mill like it's just his pepper mill had been broken in the kitchen he was really upset and so I was like oh, crikey right okay well, i appreciate that it's sentimental value and things like that no problem so look in future leave it if it's that much of a something much value leave it in your room um, i'm really sorry he's like but he came to us as if like we were his parents and i said look i'm more than happy to message the rest of the house. it's not going to do you any favors because we're going to come across like you've just come to mum and dad like yeah more than happy to interview where we can but i think it's best for you to be like mature in this instance and just say look send a whatsapp message out to the group or get him in the kit get him in the living room just have a chat so it's a case of you never go out the perfect house every time um, and touch with fair. we've been pretty lucky because they yeah. do get on but the one or two times you've had issues they they but he just didn't fit with the house really he was absolutely harmless he was good as gold but he was a bit precious compared to the other group they all got on really really well and he just didn't really click with them but he he moved on we got someone else in and they've been an absolute amazing tenant ever since day one so you're never going to get everyone keep to stay happy but we've been really lucky um so i think the key there is just just be there to support so when i'm at the house i'm subtle like i said look are you aware of what's happened with x's um item so like, yeah yeah he did mention us like, what's happened so it's just trying to just under, just keep everyone happy um be intervene where you need to but it's just trying to advise as well like some of these like they're young professionals so they're in their mid early 20s some of them like 
they've kind of straight out of education, gone straight into employment. They've, they've always kind of had someone there. Yeah. Um, so it's just kind of trying to educate where you can as well, I suppose. And just try not to be too hands on in that respect. Because the last thing I want them to do is come and call me every time that someone used my milk. Like, but this is it. So, but very, very quickly, we've learned how to deal with that sort of stuff. And yeah, yeah. it's been pretty good. So, yeah. with regards to harmony, yeah, we've got a pretty good bunch now. We've got 34 tenants in total. Wow. Um, and generally, we've anyone that was a bit iffy or a bit concerned about, they've, they've they've moved on uh, pretty quickly and we've replaced them with a really good tight knit tenants now. So we're really, really pleased. I think this, I'm going to shoot this on the foot, but this is the first time I feel that we're in a really good place. It's taken a good year, but we're in a good place with the groups we've got. And it says, it says a lot in that the last two months we've not had to chase anyone for rent, Like every month we have always had to chase at least some one person for rent. But the last two months, such word, we've, um, yeah, it's been, been all right. It's been good. Right. Oh, so it's not passive. <laughs> it's not. It's definitely not passive. Yeah, as you said, it's not a passive income. Um, and but you know that's what many people they get this dream of property being passive income sold. Um, in general, that the property in any property strategy is passive income, but it's not really that true until you really have. Like it's, it's, it's really, that's a different topic. That's a very different topic to talk about. Property will always inquire some sort of work. So passive income is not very. If I want to have a passive income, like, lease your property, lease it out. If you want passive, lease it because like a commercial lease or a put like literally that would be passive. But no, as you said, like. You're not and then you do the money rolling in, rolling in, rolling in. Yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, well, oh, well, but no, as you said, so it's, it's really, really good. So it's a people's business. Um, for example, about the having um, the right tenant in the property, it's a people business, people's business. And you, it's, you're never going to have the perfect, um, like it's impossible to just get everything perfect, especially from the, from the start, you know, it's a people's business. You're gonna, yeah, everybody's different personalities and everybody's got different tempers and things like that. So in, in, in anything from, from negotiating to filling up the property, it's a people's business. So yeah, you're going to have some obviously up and downs and all that ups and downs. I mean, up and downs, ups and downs, <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. Well done. That's, that's great. Good to hear. Good. I'm glad to hear that you're having a really nice bunch now. So yeah, well done. Okay, Dan. So, so now you you told us about your um, you know your journey with the rent to rent, and now we know that that's not uh, your forever strategy. So, what sort of thing are you looking? I know you have another very exciting project. So, what sort of things you're looking at? Um, well, yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, so as I say, the aim now is to build the portfolio. So we've got longer term wealth and freedom. So. Again, another good thing about rent to rent is I'm learning the, the ins and the outs of agents. So I'm learning what they're going to have to deal with. So in the future, when I do outsource to agents, I'm going to, I know what is expected and what that needs to be done. So that's definitely helpful. But moving forward, Lane, so I've teamed up um, recently during COVID with another local investor. So this is a chap that I've, I've met through Pig. So my, my networking event, um, we've been admiring each other's journeys and just seeing like we're just both action takers. He's achieved some amazing things this year. Like he's bought, purchased um, six properties. Um, he specializes in holiday lets as well. So he's got a great background there. Obviously me with HMOs. And the idea is we've both got the same game and goal in terms of we want to build portfolio, but we want to do it with someone. Like with, with people, there's more than just the numbers in property for me. Like we actually do want to share it. Now, Jodie, my wife, as amazing as she is, she's not into property. Like she, she doesn't. She, I can't go over plans and numbers with her, and yeah. she's not bothered. Like she doesn't. She just doesn't. She's not fussed, which she's is not a problem. But I want that someone to bounce it off. Yeah. Um, and and he was the same. So, yeah, we 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 teamed up. We set ourselves up a new company, and we're just about touch wood again. This wood is getting some work today. Um, we're due to complete on our first project together um, at the end of this month. So, yeah end of October, early November, that's the aim. And it's uh, a block of flats, block of seven flats in Newquay in Cornwall. Amazing. So we're going to buy, refurbish it, and then refinance and hold that property. Okay. So that yeah. is our first. And we've got in the pipeline, just going into planning at the minute, we just got our plans, our drawings back from architects on Friday. We're meeting today to just discuss our thoughts on the couple of variations. And we're going to be submitting to plan for planning on a block of six, but we're going to be downsizing to mm -hmm. a block of five but they're only five nice sized um, units as opposed to six micros so yeah we've got two blocks of flats in the purchase at the minute and yeah we're just 
looking just really really excited so yeah investments on board looking just to get and build that portfolio together really and share that journey and and get out of the day job um so. Yeah, you have a yeah, you have a really, really good yeah, really, really good now. So the event at the end, it gives you um I was about to say, almost said passive income. Security. No, no, you know, it gives you the income yeah. cash flow, basically. That's the word. It gives you cash flow yes. uh, for a period of time while you are setting up something bigger, something would actually you hold, something something what's going to give you a capital growth, something's going to give you a, a cash flow monthly as well. So, yeah, no, that's brilliant. Yeah, good, good thinking, good thinking. So are you planning to still grow your rent and business as well as um, you're working on other projects? Or when is your sort of what, cap on your rent? Um, that's a great question. Um, if I'm honest, I've said to, I've said that we're not going to go marketing hard. Like we're not marketing, like, diff- like we're not pushing ourselves out there. If things fall on our laps, obviously we're not going to say no to them. But I don't want a massive rent to rent mammoth of a company like um again the whole point of rent to rent is to get the cash flow that yeah. i can leave my job yeah and then focus on building this development company yeah. so i'm at that point now which is really really exciting I've, like, I've achieved all the goals we set out for so the aim is for get this first property over the line so the set the block of seven get it refurbished refinanced once that is done i believe then is the time that i need to reassess and potentially have my notice in um and then but we've got that security. Ah, I know. We've got that security then with the cash flow. And I've got that block of seven to know that we're good with what we're doing. Um, and I think, yeah. So James is going to be moving on and, and leave, leaving his job in the new year. So he'll be out first. Mm-hmm. He'll then be there. I'm, I'm probably managing a bit more hands on. But um, I'll be then soon. The aim is for me to soon follow, really. And then just, just snowball from there. But to answer your question, rent to rent. Again. I, I can systemize this now. The next aim is to outsource. So once maybe I get another one or two, I'll probably then start to outsource it to a property manager or an agent. Yeah. Um, and then I can make that a bit more passive. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the aim is just that if it, if it falls on our lap, like I've got a landlord who wants to potentially bring another couple to us because he knows us, he trusts us and he loves what we're doing. So I'm not going to say no to that. Mm-hmm. but I won't be hitting hard and spending a lot of time and, and money in marketing anymore now. So yeah, it's just as, as long as I need it, it might get to a point where the property development companies come on so nicely. I don't necessarily need the, the stress of the, the rent to men and I might sell that business as a, as a, as a business, ready made business. I don't, I don't know, but I'd love to be in a position where like, yeah, rent to rent's just starting to do my head in, but I don't need it anymore. But yeah. at the minute it's very much the, the, that's the security I have at the minute for the next step essentially. Sure. And it works well. It works so, well yeah. for you at the moment. So that's, yeah, well done. And as I said, I'm, you know, for those who are listening to this episode and don't know you yet, they will know you obviously by right now. And I will fully, usually they comment to follow you because um, it is, yeah, you, you, you just, you, the way your drive is just, your drive itself is already very inspiring and how you fit everything in seven days a week. I truly believe that you, you, you live, 10 days, 10 days a week. Do you know what I mean? You literally worked, you have 28 hours in a day. Do you know what I mean? How do you do everything you do? It's really, really cool. So yeah, I'm very, very pleased for you. That's what no, I'm talking about now. No. I'm very pleased for you that everything is, you know, uh, coming together beautifully for you and all that because you deserve it. You do work really hard. So that's really nice. Really nice. Just really, really good. No, thanks, thanks. It means a lot. And, and then just to bounce that straight back at you, like people won't know obviously when they listen to this. We had a, we were on a, we were chatting for a good half hour beforehand just on how much you're doing as well. So, like, the, oh, nothing the, compared. We are going to achieve, yeah. like, no doubt about it. So, there's, there's no doubt about it. It's just how quick it's going to come. Uh, I think I think that's the key. So you always have to say you you work your ass off. You're you're doing your work last night until eleven o'clock. And like you're, you're straight up again this morning. Like it's because we like it. We enjoy it, and we're driven. Yeah. Like we will achieve. We will succeed. Um, it's just a matter of who wants to join us and exactly and, and how quick is it going to happen it will happen it's just when so i think i'm and a true believer on that isn't it like isn't it no, like, isn't, isn't like you to them and it's like do you feel as well like sometimes it's like um what's the word i'm looking for um snowball effect isn't it so basically when this when the snowball starts rolling it's very slow and very small and then suddenly it gets bigger bigger and faster and faster and faster and faster and you are already there i feel like i'm still somewhere here but i'm gonna about to dip and go very fast as well like literally and it's, it's just you have to keep going and just don't give up ever 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 give up if you if you believe in your dreams <laughs> Yeah. 100%. I think that's a great analogy. Yeah, it does. Like even with that first deal I mentioned to you, like it, it was just trying to get the 
all like getting the snow to stick at the start was just so difficult. Um, I got the first few deals out of it, but it just wouldn't stick. And then all of a sudden the ball started rolling because I got three at once and it's just gone off the net. So it's a perfect example of that, definitely. And I think for me, as you, as I know you are as well, you're very much people, pe- people, people, um, people, people. I could do this on my own. Yeah, exactly. I, I could do this on my own, but I wouldn't enjoy it as much. And like, I'm going to have to split the profits 50 50. But that for me is, I'm, that's still, I might not be getting 100% of the profits, but that 50% I'm not getting profit wise. I'm, I'm getting in someone I'm sharing this journey with. And he is, I don't want to, because he's so worried about his day job. But mm. the nice thing is finding someone that you click with, it's got the same drive and ambition as you. Yeah. Um, but the nice thing is, like, with, and you're finding now with the people you're teaming up with, Lance, and is that you kick on, but like, if I see he's done something really, really good for the business, I'm like, shit, like, what have I done? But like, I need to, I need to up my game now. And just yeah. constantly yeah. wanting to be pulling your weight, essentially. You, you don't want to be seen as like, oh, crikey, I'm not pulling my weight here. So if, if he does something, I'm like, no, I need to do something to, to make sure I'm, I'm pulling my weight and sh- I'm, I'm moving us forward too. And it's, exactly. it just goes like that. So, um, but no, it's definitely great. I, yeah. What was it? The, the analogy I love is, um, is it go, you can go anywhere alone, but you go much faster with people. I can't remember the analogy. I've just completely I know, I know. No, screwed no, that up. If you want to go far, no, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go that's far, go together. That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. Thank you for saving me from the, <laughs> from the depths. Yeah, that's the one. That's, that for me rings massively true. So, yeah, go together, 100%. Exactly, yeah. So, yeah, far, no, it's... Go alone. <laughs> no, if you want to go... If you, go, I mean, if you want to go, if you want to go far, just go together. Team up with people and just do it. Go and do it. Hundred percent. Yeah, and as you said, it's and that's, and that's the, yeah. Even even just sorry, for example, when you say, um, when, uh, for example, in your situation, yeah, your life partner, for example, is not into property, and but that's nothing wrong with that. However, it's really good for you to be to have someone who you can bounce the ideas on and all that. So even if it's your business yeah. or it's your network, uh, you know, friends like you know you and I are you know friends which we've met through social and all that. It's like just to have. That's, that's why I love the social media now as well, because you can link up and hook up with people who are like-minded people just because your friends or your partners or your parents or whatever, they not into this, which is nothing wrong with, obviously, like everybody has different goals and dreams and desires and all that. But it's not, that's why we found the like-minded people. So you can just, yeah, talk about ideas and get, and just get help and things like that. So that's really, really important to get. And that's what I love about the WhatsApp group is, yeah, 100%. That's what I love about this WhatsApp group is that we've got people that are wanting the same thing and wanting yeah. the same goals. And I love that pig, like the professional wrestling group that I run. But that is local people wanting to learn more, get involved and stuff like that. So, yeah, no, it's um, I yeah, it. no, it's good. 100%. Echo all went, of that. I went to a pig a pig's event. I loved it, and I love the people I met there. Like until now, I'm still in the, in touch with some people I met there on the, that event. And that was by a COVID. So that was still when we met as a real humans like normal humans <laughs> in yeah, a yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was back in the day yeah. that was back in the day yeah before covid but yeah it was absolutely amazing absolutely because i i'm i'm one of those i i love networking um face to face around most of the people anyway but yeah like the yeah i love i love pigs so yeah well done and you're a very very natural presenter and everything so you can tell that you have a passion and you have a really really good people skills and yeah so if any of the listeners are fr- well I, was, I wanted to say, if any of the listeners are from the area in Truro, in Cornwall, somewhere there, definitely go to pick. But obviously these days, we don't know when we're going to have a face-to-face meetings again. So go online. But we'll, we'll get to that later, when, how they can find you and all that. But yeah, definitely. Yeah, how, how often do you run it, just for the listeners? Uh, well, once a month, a minute. So traditionally, pig, um, pig Cornwall. So we have pig Plymouth and pig Cornwall. Pig Plymouth um, is the third Monday of every month and Pig Cornwall is the second Monday of every month. That's in person, but we've teamed up and just do like a big online event now. So that's the last Monday of every month. And then of course we can't meet in person. So yeah, final Monday of each month, Pig Online. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. As I said, yeah, you, you could, you could, one could tell that you really enjoy doing it as well. Yeah. Because it's, it's, uh, it's a people's business and you get it. So awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. So, Jan, so you, you told us about your, uh, you know, your, your rent rent business and your other projects and things like that. Now, I already did ask you uh, when we were talking about the rent rent, like what your like biggest lessons are. But do do you have any other, in general now, not, not necessarily about insurance, in general, in property, do you have, what would be your like a, a like top 
tips from Dan to anybody who is either starting out or um, who's thinking about doing rent to rent now? Or yeah, do you have anything else to add? Yeah, I, I just say like whatever you're doing, someone would have done it before. Like someone is doing it, someone's done it before. Find them. Find someone who's doing it before that you can click wherever and you you like you you admire or you're inspired by and, and just learn from them first of all. So it's don't reinvent the wheel. Like there's no need to reinvent the wheel. If someone's doing it successfully and is able to do it, then learn from others yeah. and learn from others' mistakes if you can. Um, another one is for me, as you said, how do I fit everything in my day? Like it is a massively intense, <laughs> I suppose. But if you want it bad enough, I don't find that I'm working hard. It's just I enjoy what i'm doing so I, i'm, I'm inspired and motivated to get up mm. yeah 100 percent. like again i think so my, my next tip is segment new days so for me i've got a, a real strict routine like i'm from a from a PE teacher doing like twenty thousand steps a day to sitting in a car doing eight like doing three thousand steps a day it kills me as you can imagine so i've got to fit in fitness in there because it drives me nuts if i can't um so yeah just segment your day split up your day what do you want to achieve from your days like i want to do property i want to do fitness i need to spend family time I need to do the day job, right? There's my things I need to fit in. Now I need to work out. I've got 24 hours to fit that oh, and sleep. So I've got 24 hours to fit those things in. So work it out. Um, so I've worked out what the minimum amount of sleep I need to function well. Um, so that's a lot of trial and error. Like I was doing like the 5 a.m. wake ups and things like that. I was like, I, but I was going to bed at like nine, 11 o'clock and stuff. I just wasn't enough for me. But I've worked out that if I go to bed at half 10, I can wake up at half five and I can still be pretty good. Like nice. I have to kick myself out of bed, but I can function well. But I've then got two hours before the family wake up so I can get the dog out for some exercise. I can do my, my admin for the day job, uh, for, the, for the property side of things. I can then have time to take my, my eldest to school. So I take my eldest to school. I'll then come back and try and fit in a quick uh, hit session after I've dropped him off. Then I'll start the day. It's even easier than because I'm working from home. So I can start the day for my day job. I then do the day for the day job. Then I'll, like, it's just fitting it into your day length. So that is all it is. So massively segment your day, follow what other people are doing who will inspire you and just don't reinvent the wheel and just bloody do it. Like stop thinking about it. And if you want it bad enough, just, just I'm, the amount of times I get so frustrated with people, like, oh, I'm just asking so many questions. It's like, look, I've given you all the answers now. You need to go and do this for yourself. Yeah. Um, no issues with helping but i've got no patience for people that aren't prepared to put the effort in oh yes um, i'm just thinking you're lucky so it's, oh, yes. no, you there's, make so it many, there's so many people out there who let's say just ask for materials ask for help and all that but then there's no actions whatsoever they don't even try like sometimes people try for example i have a friend i don't want to like name this to the people because i don't know if they want that to be known but there's like a um in a very, very good way, yeah. I know someone who really wanted to do essays and uh, um, that person started essays, started uh, three even two essays uh, and then just sold them. She just absolutely hated it, absolutely hated it. Not for me, so I give away, now next plan. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I, 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 compel, sorry, I completely respect that and I love that because that person is an action taker anyway. Try that, I thought I want to do this, I want to do this. Try that, not for me out try something else so some people that doesn't even because they don't hold to what they thought they want that doesn't mean that they are not good at it they just find out that that's not for me let's try a different strategy for example but there you've got so many people who don't act at all and that's that's the one when you get a bit of fed up like look wait i try to help you i try to give you this i try to give you that i gave you my time you know you ask for this you ask for that and there's no nothing coming out it's like well do you really want it because i don't mind helping you if you really want it, <laughs> but if you don't want it, I've got no issues with helping. I've got no issues with helping. It's just I don't want to keep giving so much time and trying to offer you as much value as you can. But people aren't moving on it. It's like, look, come on, I'm, I can't. I, if I was to do anything more, I'd be signing the contract for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's just there's, there's there's plenty out there, and, and I was very conscious not to be one of those people. In this case of look, I want to try and give something back. I don't want anything back. Like, I'm not charged with this sort of stuff. It's just a case of I just want to help. Like. Because it's something that I would have taken on um, and, and been with myself. So, yeah, no, I, I just want to see, just take action. If you want it bad enough, nothing's going to happen unless you do something. So, yeah, I think very, again, apologies, very long-winded, but hopefully that answers your question. No, that's really good. And now you're not saying it, but you kind of, uh, you, you're doing it. So I'm just going to point that out as well, that because you are really, really good at it. 
is put yourself out there. So you are one of the perfect examples who, who is putting yourself out there. And again, how do you fit that in your 24 hours? I don't know, but you are really good at social media as well. And is the visibility, is credibility, and you know, you also use your videos, for example, as your to be accountable, which is really amazing. So this is why I love when, when you start your videos, sometimes you go like, I don't even know if anyone is listening, but I just accountable to myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, th I think that's what you've got to be. If it's, it's that mental attitude, isn't it? Like, it's like same with you, your podcast. You'd have been the same. Like, who's going to listen to my podcast? But you've got hundreds of listeners now, yeah. like thousands even. If you look at your YouTube and stuff, so it's just a case of look. You're doing this to help you, and if you can help others along the way, fantastic. But yeah, yeah like that. It's your podcast. You've done it because you're learning, aren't you? Like that's one of the main reasons, and you're trying to help other people learn at the same time. Like, exactly. If you can do both at the same, happy thirty days. Exactly. So yeah, that's no definitely. So my yeah. Yeah, I don't even know if people listen or watch the videos, but I know that in a year's time, I'm really looking forward to seeing and watching what I did last week when I'm got a couple of blocks of flats down the line and another couple in, in the pipeline. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Amazing. And that's why we do it. Yeah. So, and you know, like yeah, people definitely. like, Gar yeah, do you know Ga uh, Gary B? No, I'm sure you do. Gary yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, of definitely. So yeah, so Gary V. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Gary Vee is one of those people who say that um, if you are, if you want to achieve something from your social media, so for example, you point because you already have your insurance and all that, but if you want to achieve something from your social media, then let's say get more investors or things like that, you, what you're doing, you're doing really, really well. He said, do not give up. You can be doing sometimes uh, social media posts every day for one year and not get anything. But if you are consistent, something just going to suddenly boom and it's just gonna come. So, you know, like people do watch your videos and people do learn from you a lot. But what I wanna say is that even someone like you, you, you already have some, you know, some, some rent to rent, for example, portfolio. So I don't know what necessarily, um, like you, 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 might, you might just do um, the, your videos because of accountability or to help others, but you never know, you know, things like that. Like one day you're just gonna have the investors gonna be like, you know what, mate, I've been watching you for the last year. You know what you're doing. You look active enough, da, da, da. This is how much money I got. Do you want to do something with it? And that's how people find investors as well. So you just don't know. So yeah, it's just just keep being consistent because you're doing a great job. Okay. No, thank you. No, definitely. And I know you've stepped your game up massively in the last few months too, which is, is great. So yeah, it's it's getting out of your own way lengths, isn't it? It's a case of like I hate lives. I cringe at every single time I do a live, but it's just a case of look, just get on with it, Dan. Like I know I feel so much better having done it. Yeah. And I think, oh, that was crap or <laughs> oh no what I, it's got to a point where i don't care what people think like i'm doing this i've got i've got the vision i used to be so so worried about oh what, what people say if i say that or, you know what this is me you like it you don't like it brilliant. if you don't want to watch it just don't be just unfriend me love i think it. that's that yeah love mindset, it definitely yeah. And it's like, as he said, like you, you never, ever, ever, ever going to please everybody. Yeah. So in this game, like in, in everything, anything else, when you show me one famous person in anything, movies, sport, whatever, one famous person who everybody love, that's not possible. You're always going to come, you know, like that. You're going to always have some haters or I don't know what to call them like that because we know, you know, but you know what I mean? It's like, so you just stay yourself. What you can do, one thing you can do is just to stay yourself because people who's going to, people who will love you will love you for who you are and who don't then goodbye. <laughs> you don't need those in your life anyway. So yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's very, it's very important to stay yourself. And sometimes the hardest thing is to stay yourself. And, uh, if you can do that, that's, you know, it's respect. Yeah, just do that. That's amazing. So, yeah, well done, Dan. Well done. Definitely. Okay, so now, um, traditionally, traditionally, I always ask every single of my guests on any book they have recommend to read to, or listen to, because obviously these days we have audio books as well. So, do you have any book you would like to recommend? I've got a few things. Again, I've, I've got every single question you've answered, I've given you an essay, so I'm really conscious of that. So apologies, but I've got I've got loads. Of, I've listened to all your pods as well, your podcasts, and I'm conscious of trying to do something that someone haven't hasn't mentioned previously. Like, I've, got, I've made a little list here because I know it's questions. So I've, I've, like the, the books I've the standard rich dad porter. That was the first one that really hit home. You, you can get assets that bring you in income. Yeah. Uh, and got that, be obsessed or be act, um, average by uh, Grant Cardone. I'm not a massive Grant Cardone fan, if I'm honest with you, but some of his um, <laughs> analogies and, and... Oh, it's crazy, but you know what? The, the be obsessed will be average. I think we've both echoed that today in that yeah. you want it bad enough. You've got to be, yeah. got to be better to put your, money, uh, your, your time in and the effort in. So that's one that really hit home. 10X uh, by Grant Cardone. Again, 
it's not one I don't wholly agree with it in terms of the, the, the numbers side, but I do agree with set your targets higher, shoot for the moon, uh, shoot for the stars and hit the moon sort of thing. Yeah. I do agree with that. If I target myself for a higher achievement and I don't, I just slip off that, well, I'm going to be better off than where I would have done if I hadn't something, you know what I mean? So yeah. again, another book I've read, I don't necessarily, not as the Bible, but I do like the um, thought process. A couple a Life Leverage, Rob Moore, um, I think that has been a big one in terms of systemizing as much as you can. Mm, um, and three one. biography type of books. Yeah, yeah, three biography books that have hit home. I think it's Total Total Recall, Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, yes. Really good book. Oh, really good Total book. Recall, um, Total Recall. Can just, just one second. With Total Recall is... Yeah. So this book, um, I have been listening because it's the, one of the thickest books you can ever buy eh, in the history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like on Audible, because I listen to books on Audible, yeah. on Audible, it's like it's like 24 hours, 23 hours something. Yeah? And because now like I'm trying to listen to it, but I feel like I've been listening to it for weeks and I'm still in the middle. It's like, it's such a long book. <laughs> so I'm it's, currently it's on so Audible. Deep, yeah, very good. Yeah. yeah, it is a really good book. And some of the stuff he does, it is crazy. But again, perfect example of be obsessed to be average. Like, who would have thought it? Austrian bodybuilder. He's come over. He's a, a Hollywood star. No one poo pooed him. So yeah, Arnie's that one. Another one. Uh, David Goggins can't help me. Pretty standard. But again, mindset. It's just in the head. Like, I, I was doing 10k that? runs every single day. You were breaking oh, sorry, up. David Goggins can't hurt me. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Oh, no. Can't hurt me. Um, again, just. It's in your head. It's in your head. Battle through it. Um, yeah. And then the last one was Hustle Harder, Hustle Smarter Ooh, by Curtis know. Jackson, 50 Cent. That's been a recent one. Ah, yeah, that's a, you'll like that one. I like that that one. Book. Yeah, nice. I love, yeah, I so love. That was the other one, yeah. So, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, you got eight books there. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> yeah, you can tell. We can tell now that you uh, did listen or you do listen to lots of audio books, you know, and you said you did lots of drives. For work. <laughs> oh, I, I, I think I did Arnold in two weeks. <laughs> so, Fantastic. Yeah. No, I really appreciate your uh, recommendations. That's great. Thank you very much for that. And then one more a question, which again I always ask every single of my guests is: Do you have anything to recommend to watch? Is there any movie or I, country? Yeah. It's kind of a guilty pleasure. So. I don't know if I'm embarrassed or proud to say anything. <laughs> um, my, a film that I, I love, um, wrongly or rightly, is The Greatest Showman. I absolutely <gasps> love The Greatest Showman. That, no, but that uh, is a lot. Uh, no, there's a, I, I, not only the music, obviously, I'm, my karaoke's on point for Greatest Showman. <laughs> but I'm sure. The message behind it, <laughs> the message behind it is great. Like, um, yeah, with P.T. Barnum, with the whole, where he went, came from, and where he went to again. Just the sacrifices he makes. I don't agree with the sacrifices some of them he made, but just the whole story behind it. I think, yeah, really inspired me. So, oh. yeah, Great Showman is a book that I would. Yeah. That yeah. Is, uh, not a book, sorry, a film that I'd recommend. Yeah, yeah, that is really, really cool. I love it because it's like that's you wouldn't. That's nothing to do like with a property, yeah, or documentary, but it gives you. It's a lot about like mindset, but you wouldn't necessarily link that to, you know, like greatest showman talking about property. Like, that's really, really good. And you, you like, I love that. I love that recommendation. Yeah. It's really cool. Yeah, the lyrics, like, listen to the lyrics. Like some of them are like, you know what that, yeah, it makes sense. Actually. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, no, very clever, very clever. I yeah. love that. I love that. You know what? I'm actually, I should listen. I should watch it uh, soon again. It's been a long time. I watched that one. I'm on the, at the moment I am on James Bonds. So I, you know, who follows me, who knows that I basically turned 30 recently, like a few months ago, and I absolutely love anything related to spice. Like I love spice, uh, movies and spice and etc. And I realized that I don't actually know James Bonds. So what I started to do is that I started watching them from the number one and I'm going through and I'm on the, and I'm on the uh, episode 14 now. Oh, episode, I mean, number 14 now. Come on, cool. What one are you on? I'm on number 14, which was Octopussy. I watched, a lot, that I watched Octopussy, the latest. That was my latest one. Yeah, so I'm watching them one by one. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I've watched them. Pardon? Right. I don't think I've watched them all either. Like I've, yeah. Oh, sorry, legs, my internet's crap. I, I don't think I've watched them all either. So fair play to you. That's good. Yeah. Oh my gosh, man! You know what? This is like, 
I, I never realized how much history and how much lessons you actually got in something like James Bond, you know, like things like the, the music in them, uh, the, 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 the famous uh, phrases and things like that. Like sometimes I'm just like, oh, this is where it's from. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, the, do you know what I mean? It really, because it's a piece of history. It's a piece of history actually in them. So I love when, you know, you only recommended something. Which like not... awesome. <laughs> Pardon? The next one for you then is Only Fools and Horses. That'll keep you busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, want some, you want some historical slogans and slang? You go for that one. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, I didn't hear that. Your internet is not really great. I didn't hear the last one. Oh, bit. sorry. As I was saying, if you want some good, good historical comments and slang, go for Only Fools and Horses. <laughs> Only Fools and Horses? What's that? Yes. That is true British humour. Go for it. You'll love Seriously? it. Seriously? Okay. Anyone listening to this will know exactly. You're doing James Bond, you can't miss out that. <laughs> right, cool. Noted, noted. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, Dan, really, that's awesome. I love your tips. I love all the tips you gave us today. So that's amazing. So now, just to end it, end it with, uh, can you please tell the listeners where to find you if you want to be found? <laughs> if, they, yeah. if they want any... Yeah, no problem. Um, if I'm honest, I'm just social media is probably the easiest legs. So Instagram, um, Dan Anson Hart, or uh, Facebook Dan Anson Hart. Just, yeah, socials. Um, come and feel free to join the, the professional investment group. Uh, Facebook pages as well. Give us have a little, little watch. See what we're up to. Stay we're all online at the minute, so everyone's welcome. Um, first one's free as well. So yeah, no, that that's pretty much it, really. Thanks. Yeah, come on socials. Fantastic. I'll pop your name and uh, the, the details for the pick and everything on the YouTube video um, so cool. people can actually see it. And then, yeah, for the, for, the ep- for the podcast episode, I'll put it in the description as well. So if anybody who doesn't... But yeah, your name is going to be on the episode anyway, so they know how to spell your name, which means that how they can find you on the social media. So perfect. Oh, well, I'm that, in the WhatsApp group. that was... Yeah. yeah, amazing, which is awesome. I'm part of that WhatsApp group and it's incredibly helpful. Really, really, really good job. Good job there. That's yeah, that group is really, really good. As you said, these are always people they just they just ask questions, answering questions. Everybody's happy to share and, and there's no one there's no one shy to ask, even if you feel like, hmm, shall I ask this? No, you just people just do and it's really good. So well done. All right, Dan. Well, Thank you ever so much for coming today on the show. Like, I really, really enjoyed our um, episode today. You were absolutely fantastic. As I said, you are incredibly inspiring in many ways. And uh, I'm sure that every listener uh, will learn a lot from you. And then the ones who are not following you yet, they will follow you now. And yeah, so just keep shining. I'm sure you will achieve everything you set your your mind into. And uh, yeah, thanks again, again for coming. You're an absolute legend. Absolute star. No, thank you. Thank you for having me. That means a lot. Thanks, Legs. Thanks, Dad. Bye.